But I think P is the simplest valuation indicator and usually is a very good benchmark uh, for lay investors and for not very sophisticated investors to look at uh, how a stock or a business is being valued. Uh, because it gives you a measure of how the market cap of the, or the valuation of the whole business is relative to the kind of profits it is generating. And finally, stock prices move on profit generation and profit growth. And the P in a simple sense tells you or gives you a sim idea of where the valuation of the overall business stands in relation to the profits and the expected growth in profits. So I think the simplicity of the P multiple makes it probably the most elegant valuation multiple for most investors. Now more sophisticated investors can do a whole host of other things like DCFs and uh, all kinds of things. But if you're a lay investor and all you need is some sense of what the price is indicating to you before you take an investment call, I think one should use the PE multiple. Though from, for certain classes of stocks, like financial stocks, like banks, etc., there are other valuation parameters which might be more accurate. Well, this is a problem with PE multiples because uh, PE multiples can often flatter to deceive. Sometimes you think that a P multiple is too high and you do not buy a stock. Now this may be dangerous because what the market is doing at some points in ascribing a very high P multiple to a particular business is essentially conveying or signaling that it expects the growth of this business to be fairly significant over a three, four, five year period. Now the market may be right or wrong in that, but one always needs to look at the P multiple in relation with the expected growth. Now, you know, there are examples of many stocks like say, uh, I'll give you two popular examples in the market, which is Page Industries and HDFC Bank. You know, for the longest time, for the last five, seven, eight years, one always hears of people saying Page Industries is very expensive because it is trading at 50 PE. But the oft overlooked point is that the profit also grows at 40% a year, and therefore the P multiple keeps coming down. And therefore, to look at Page Industries P multiple without looking at the expected growth would have led to its mistakes uh, of omission on the part of investors. The case is the same with HDFC Bank, where the sheer growth trajectory of the bank actually took care of its high price P multiple and price to book multiple. The opposite is also true. Sometimes you see stocks trading at very poor, low P multiples, and you jump in saying, this is a 5P stock, I should be buying it immediately. But the 5P is probably indicating that the quality of the business is not great. It's deeply cyclical, like you see with metal companies, which don't get high P multiples. So the expected growth is low, or at least the growth is so cyclical in nature that you, it's not like a bank, HDFC bank, which keeps on clocking 25% growth for years on end. Sometimes it'll be high, sometimes it'll be low. So don't just look at the P multiple, also look at the relative underlying growth. This is a very important question because the propensity is to look at the next year's P multiple. But here I would submit that people should look at the experience of the last four years, just the last four years of what has happened with forward P multiples. Every year analysts start by saying that the forward P multiple is this, but they do that by assuming that there will be 20% plus earnings growth. But by the end of the year, for the last three, four years, we usually find out that the end of the year earnings growth is not 20 plus, 20 plus percent, but closer to two and three percent. The average growth for the last four years for the Nifty is I think closer to two percent. That is a huge stumbling block for forward PEs because you are making a terrific assumption or a very important and dangerous assumption in making that P multiple calculation by factoring in that what was 100 in terms of earnings, the base of the PE, will become 120 next year. But when you see that the 100 does not go to 120, but goes to 102, then on hindsight you realize that you made a mistake in thinking that the P multiple was lower. So sometimes one, it is good to go against conventional wisdom and also keep an eye on what is the trailing PE, which is actual realistic real fact. What was the last four quarters earnings? And you do the P multiple calculation on that actual delivered earning not a futuristic hope and that is something which you need to keep at the back of your mind because that is real and the future PE or the prospective PE is actually hope. <laughs>